Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are making a bird out of our into resin bird mold, but we're not using resin. We're using mixed mold. So, ta-da, mixed mold. And I have two scoops of mixed mold in there because this is a medium size mold and uh, so I'm going to be just adding water until it gets to the consistency that I want. Boop. So about two tablespoons ish. My tiny whisk. everything all mixed together. Now, this stuff is pretty forgiving. Um, whereas, if you don't add enough water, you can just keep adding water until it gets to the consistency that you want. Now, obviously, it's a bit thick, so let me add a little bit more. Here we go. So that's a bit better. Getting there. A bit thinner of a consistency than that. I'm looking for something that's about the consistency of double cream um, or heavy whipping cream if, you, if you're American. Uh, corners here, and I need to go around the edges with my stick, just to make sure that I get everything stirred in and lump free. Don't want to be wasting any powder. Nope. Yes, I do keep a piece of cardstock on my silicone mat just because it's a lot easier to clean. Just pick it up and move it. Let's throw it away. All right. So now that that's done, I am going to add some uh, of my colorant. This is actually my resin creek colorant, uh, and I'm going to be adding black. So I'm going to be adding a lot of black because it's obviously a white medium. So I want to add a lot of pigment to it to make sure that I get the color that I want. And that looks about good. So I counted roughly, and there was about eight, eight, eight or nine drops that I put in there. So that gives us a nice dark color, which I'm happy with. Now that we have that all mixed up, we're going to add it to our mood. Our mood. Moldy, moldy, mold. So. And then we're going to start adding it to our mold. Pour it out halfway, give it a squish, get any ear bubbles out of his little tail. Tap, 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 tap. Fill him up a little bit more. Second verse, same as the first. Squish, squish, tap, tap, squish, 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 poke his nose, poke his tail. And just fill up the rest of the mold. And I pretty much got it spot on. There's a little 
little bit of space left, but I'm okay with that. And cleaning out these containers when you're when you're ready to clean them out, do not rinse this out into your sink. It's water activated. <laughs> and when water activates it, it gets slimy. When it dries, it goes rock hard. So unless you want rock hard eco resin in your drain pipes, don't 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 put this in your sink. Okay? Wait until it dries or wipe this out with a paper towel. Wait until it dries and then spray the container with water and then wipe it out with a paper towel or a baby wipe or something like that. Don't put it down your sink. Uh, generally what I do is I wait until it, it dries then I squish the container and it'll bust up into little tiny pieces and we're good to go. Now if I was, you know, if I want to clean my silicone stick I have my high-tech mess mitigation device I have my bottle of 99% alcohol. I spray some on and I wipe it off. See? So if you want to be really pedantic about it, do this. Um, if you want to clean it immediately, that's fine. Just don't put it down your drains. Anyway, that's enough of my uh, public service announcement about <laughs> eco resin. We're going to lift this here and I will see you guys back. For the demold. See you soon. Demold. Demold. All right. So let's get this little deuter out of here. Let's loosen it up. Because it is still fragile, as are most eco resin projects when they're newborns. Thankfully, this is a very squishy mold. So I'm hoping that I don't snap off the tail or something. Get his little head out. And we can gently, gently with his little tail. Wiggle, wiggle. Come on, little guy, you can do it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Bird. He does have a couple of little spots on his beak or on his neck. That's not the mixed and mold's fault. That's actually a flaw on the mold itself. So, let's get this turned back right side. Let's clean up our mess here. Let me get Eva. Eva! Like the description box. Poor Captain Critter's sick, so he's coughing. All right, so since now we need to get a little bit of the uh, imperfections off, I just have a 220 sanding block here. I'm just gonna gently, gently, gently. Over his little little neck. Right. Okay. So there he is. All beautiful. Got a couple of little 
holes in his buns. But those are very easily get ridable. Ta da! So there we have it. Our beautiful little blackbird. Good job, mixed a mold. I'm pleased with it. So once he has a chance to fully cure, um, to get at least 24 hours, and then I will go over him with uh, a sealant. I make my own sealant. It's a combination, uh, half and half, of beeswax and tongue oil. T-U-N-G. <laughs> Not the thing that's in your face. Uh, but uh, I use that, and it works beautifully. Uh, the beeswax really seals everything in, and so does the tongue oil. I know a lot of people use uh, things that are mineral oil based, but I don't because, fun fact, mineral oil never truly cures uh, or dries or anything. So if you're using mineral oil to um, seal things in uh, or waterproof things like cutting boards, wooden cutting boards or things like that, it never truly fully cures. So it, um, yeah. So I would suggest tongue oil. That's just my humble opine. Anywho, thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care, guys. Cheers.